This time on Jairus of All, I make so many masks. This video is not about 3D printing masks, but rather about finishing them really fast. And I got the idea when I made this octopus, 3D printed, and I decided to finish it to make it look like old metal. I was gonna use a heat gun to dry the paint fast, but I couldn't find it, so I used a propane torch, and it made the paint dry much faster and bubble, and it looked fantastic. So I decided to use that on a mask. This turned out incredibly cool looking. I used a textured green paint because I found that that filled layer lines faster than other paints did. And with a combination of that and some green chalkboard paint, I got a really nice base to make this corroded brass look. So after that was down, I just dry brushed on some copper and gold and it made it look fantastic. But I wanted the teeth to be silver, so I darkened that area and then dry brushed silver on top. So now I have this old corroded looking mask that could have been sitting in the ocean for years. And it looks so cool, I decided to make a few more using this technique with different colors. They're finished, and I think they turned out really well. The intention was to see if this technique would translate to other materials, and I think it did. This one is rusted steel, and I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it's definitely convincing in real life. The next one was bone or sand finished, and this didn't look that good at first, but after some dry brushing and airbrushing, I think it looks pretty awesome. This mask, I wanted to see if I could just translate this to use any color and if the finish would at least look cool. So this is just red on top of it. I used a different textured paint that was kind of a pain in the butt and I should have paid attention to the can because it said it took six hours to dry. So this one took some time <laughs> instead of being really fast, but it did turn out really awesome. But in the process of doing these, I decided I wanted to try some other stuff. So on this one, which I didn't film, I used some metallic pigments on it and I thought it turned out really incredible, which made me think that maybe I should compare and contrast this technique with traditional and see how long it takes to do this compared to a nice, smooth, finished surface. So I printed another mask just like this and coated it with epoxy. That did not work. Unfortunately, even though I've done this before and it's worked pretty well, this time it washed out all the detail on the mask and for some reason the epoxy was separating and leaving gaps and it was running. It basically ruined the mask. So I printed another one and tried another new technique. I used car paint. This is two part clear coat and I didn't even spray it. I just mixed it up and brushed it on and it hid the layer lines on that mask better than epoxy ever has for me. Kept the detail, made it smooth. This one's finished and it does look very cool, but it took a lot more time than I thought it would. I did have some issues with it, because I had interference with the paints and the curing, but I did find out that this mirror paint that I got from Culture Hustle gives a really incredible chrome finish, and you can protect it with acrylic paint, 
and it retains almost all of its shine. I used that and did a coat of the two-part auto paint. So now it's very well protected and very glossy and shiny, but I don't think it turned out as cool as this one. Obviously, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, so you can decide which one you like more, but I prefer this one. In finishing this and having the new technique of using the two-part car paint, I decided I'd do a few more nicely finished prints to try yet another technique. This set of spoons is painted with the exact same paint. The only difference is that this has a black base coat. I got a big set of metallic powders and most of them are color changing like this. So I have a bunch of different options that I wanted to try on the masks. But in order to make you get this crazy result, I painted gradients on them in different shades to see what would happen. And the result is pretty amazing. Ta-da! They're all finished. And of course, since I can't leave well enough alone, I went back and hand painted the teeth on this, which was kind of the plan in the first place, and the grills on the sides, and did those in chrome. I thought it would be a nice combination with the gold that was on it. And the middle three masks, I liked them well enough the way they were. I didn't change anything. I did coat all of these with the two-part car clear coat paint though, which gave them a really protected, nice shiny finish. But this one, was special because I did the blowtorch technique on this and then did the metallic powders and the shading and it came out really awesome and really wild looking. And in doing something so wild looking, I decided to try something else that was a little bit of a wild idea. I wanted this mask to look like ice and it looks cool, but not that icy. So the mask that I ruined with epoxy in the beginning, I decided to go back and make that look like it was made out of ice and it turned out really incredible. I really like the colors and the plan was to put a nice coat of the car clear coat on it to make it look super shiny. But then late one night, I had this crazy idea because I remembered that I had this diamond dust. It's glass flake glitter. And I thought maybe if I put the car paint on and then put the glitter paint on top of that, I might get a really incredible result. So I came out to the garage real late and I did it. And it ended up looking like some kind of crystallized Japanese ice demon thing. <laughs> And this might be my favorite mask. It went from my biggest mistake in this project to my biggest success, and I love it. This all started with this. This is my personal mask that I've been wearing for the better part of a year. I made a red one also. And these are examples of how cool a mask can look without any real finishing. I just painted directly on the plastic. But now that I have 
so many masks, I'm not gonna be able to wear them all. And people frequently ask me if they can buy the stuff that I made. Well, this is your opportunity. I don't do this very often, but I'm putting all of the masks on eBay. There will be links to all the listings in the description of this video, including the two paint test masks that I never finished. But if you want one of these, you'll be able to find it down there. I hope you like these and get a chance to try out some of the crazy new techniques. Well, they're new to me at least on some 3D prints of your own. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.